bless your name today. Honor and praise as we lift up our hands to the Lord. Welcome to Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. All things are upheld by the words of his power. Get ready to discover the laws that govern the kingdom of God and how those laws can be applied in your life through active faith. That is the picture of what God wants to do for you in your life. And now, Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. Well, this is the third installment of our sermon series, The Call. And today we're talking about glorifying God, glorifying God. If you have your Bibles, let's go to our base scripture. It's Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. We'll begin reading at verse 38. Again, that's Acts chapter 10, verse 38. And it reads, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. For God was with him. Let's look at this passage of scripture. There's a couple of points we can glean from that. First of all, it says that he was anointed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. When we're called by God, God has an anointing on our lives. An anointing is for service. God has a calling for us. So once again, there is an anointing for us to do what it is that he's called us to do. Now, Jesus is our great example. So because he's our great example, we ought to follow his lead. God anointed Jesus to do what? To preach, to teach, to heal, to do good, to heal all those who are oppressed by the devil. Y'all know that once again, God is anointing us to do the same. Now, we may have particular areas, but God has anointed us to do a work. And, and when we're called by God or as we begin to seek God's face as to his relation to what we're supposed to be doing, he will reveal his plan to us. He will reveal his plan to us. And when we begin to walk in that anointing, the others will begin to see that anointing. If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 4. Realize, you know, that when Jesus was baptized, the word of God says the Holy Spirit came on him in the form of a dove. It was like a dove. But then he went to the spirit, led him to temptation. Where he was tempted 40 days and 40 nights. But I think it's quite interesting after the temptation. And we begin reading right here at verse 14. It says Jesus returned to the in the power of the spirit to Galilee and his fame went throughout the surrounding regions. He taught in their synagogues being glorified by everyone. When you're anointed by God and you do what God has called you to do, you stand strong even in the hour of temptation. There is a power and there's anointing that will come on you and people will praise God. Now he walked in this call and what was he doing? Teaching in the synagogues. And when they saw him, the word of God talks about how they glorified him. They glorified Jesus. When people see you, when you're anointed by God and you begin to work the works of God, being led by the spirit of God, people will glorify God for your presence. The things that you do, they will give praise and glory to God. Now, there's another point going back to Acts chapter 10 and 38. It says he went about doing good. He went about doing good. Now, what does that mean? Well, first of all, let's let's go take it from the beginning. We know he was anointed. What does the anointing mean? Just to rub on, to smear on. When you are anointed by God and you and you're called by God and, and you're set apart to do his work and you have a mind to do what it is that God has called you to do. One of the first things you need to do is ask God on a daily basis, God, what am I supposed to be doing today? What will you call? What do you want me to do today? It's a good idea to fellowship with God. And when you fellowship with God, and a lot of times it's good to do this first thing in the morning. 
God will speak to your heart. What should you be doing? Now, what's happening here? You're conversing with God. You're going back and forth with God. Before I go on, I do need to make this note. We know that Jesus spent time with the Father. He spent time with the Father. And don't you understand and don't you know that as he spent time with the Father, oftentimes God told him what was going to happen that day. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. But there were also times where he had to be sensitive to the Spirit. Let me give you a great example. We're talking about Jesus now. Do you remember the centurion? The word of God says the centurion came to him and asked him to come heal his, his servant. Now, by law, Jesus was not supposed to enter his house. But the spirit, I'm sure he was led by the spirit of God, told him to go. And he says, I will go. But once again, it was against the law. But how many of y'all understand when we're led by the spirit, he knows how to work everything out. That's when the centurion told him, say, you know what? I'm not worthy for you even to come to my house. Just speak the word only. What's the whole point here? When we spend time with God, God oftentimes will tell us what we're going to do throughout the day, but sometimes you won't know until you get there. Now, let's get more of a practical point. God may tell you, I want you to go to the bank. Now, you may say, well, God, I don't need to go to the bank. Man. I got a little, no, no, I want you to go to the bank and get a few dollars. In your mind, it may not make any sense. Remember, the word of God says he went about doing good. Now, you have no idea why God is telling you to do it. But you go to the bank, you get the money. Later on that day, God may say, I want you to bless that individual right there with that amount of money. For you to do good, you have to be led by the spirit of God. See, oftentimes we want to limit God to, you know, I was nice to this person or I helped this person out when they needed my help. But it's not limited to that. It is when you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit. When you are sensitive, the more sensitive you are to the Holy Spirit, the more you can go around do, go about doing good because the Holy Spirit is going to tell you what to do. Even in times, as I gave an example with Jesus, will look like it's, I'm not supposed to do it. The Lord all, or the Holy Spirit knows exactly what we should be doing at all times. He went about doing good. Now, let me go back. Do you notice everything that I'm talking about right now is really based out of your relationship or your fellowship with God? When you spend time with God, you're fellowshipping with him. There's another point I want to make. When you spend time with God, when you're fellowshipping with him, when you praise and you're worshiping him, the word of God says he inhabits the praise of his people. So his anointing, it comes down on you. You begin to feel the presence and you practice his presence. And when you begin to do this on a daily basis, guess what? People can see that anointing on you. It's something different about you. I remember, what is the anointing? It means to smear on. So when the anointing comes on you, you have God's presence on you and you begin to see and think like God. So when issues come about you or when issues come against you, whatever's going on in your life, you won't see this thing as a carnal person. You'll see it the way God sees it. Why? Because you practice the anointing or you practice his presence. When you practice his presence, you can go about doing good. Why? Because the anointing is on you. There's another, there's another point it says. It says, not only did he go about doing good, but he healed all who were oppressed by the devil. He went about healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Now, we talked about it at a, at a different time. What, is, what does it mean to be oppressed by the devil? That means the enemy has you in some type of bondage in your thinking. He has some type of stronghold in your mind that you view as facts or in your mind you may view it as truth. But it is a lie from the enemy. It's a way of thinking. All who are oppressed by the devil. It can be any type of thought as it relates to your sickness. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're sick, you're sick. But the enemy will have you believe that there's no way out for you. He'll have you thinking that that's it. You can never be cured. That's just your lot in life. It could be financial situations. You know, you may be looking at, you know what? I'm not, I look like I'll never get out of debt, but you know what? God has a plan for you. But if you don't think you'll ever get out of debt, guess what? You will not. 
But the word of God says he came, went about healing all who were oppressed by the devil. What does that mean? He healed them, not only mentally, but physically. He gave them a new way of thinking. The word of God says he anointed, he, that he was anointed by God to preach the gospel to the poor. So if you had a, some type of mindset that, that led you to believe that you're poor and you're just going to be poor the rest of your life, no, the word of God says he came to preach the gospel. The gospel is the good news to the poor. What is that good news? You don't have to be poor no more. He came to deliver you, heal your thinking, that stinking thinking that we have, that anyone would cause us to believe that it's just the way we are. Or it may be I messed up so bad in life that, that there's no hope for me. No one will give me a chance. Listen, let me tell you something. When you follow God, when you choose to get in his presence on a daily basis, he'll lead you right there to a place and he'll lift you up to a high place. In fact, the word of God says it this way. He said he'll take you from the dung to sit with princesses. We can say it like this way. He'll take you from being homeless to sit, for you to sit on the board at a Fortune 500 company. There's no limitations with God, but the issue is, can you believe? The word of God says he healed all who were oppressed by the devil. He gave them a new way, a different way of thinking. And he also demonstrated this with power. Now, once we fellowship with God on a daily basis, we get instructions from God. God, I want to do this, this, this. What do you want me to do, Lord? He may tell you. Or you may go along, okay, in your mind you're about to do this, but as you go about your day, the Lord may tell you, give you different directions. Like I used the example with Jesus, be led by the Spirit of God. Let me say this, when you're anointed by God and when you're operating in your calling, well, let me go back and say it this way. When you're anointed by God, with that anointing, that his presence is on you, anything that you do will be affected. It'll have the anointing on it, particularly if you're operating in your calling, what God has called you to do. God anoints you. You practice the presence of God. Then you go about doing whatever it is that God has you to do. There's going to be something different about you. And when you're operating in your calling, there's going to be something different. You're going to look different from the other person on your job. There's something, once again, that's going to be different about you. So much so, if you're practicing the presence of God, anyone who's oppressed, their lives will be changed. What do you mean? I don't care what you're doing. You may be in business. You may be a, cash, a cashier at, at a grocery store. When you practice the presence of God, it can be just your simple smile. A person is drawn to you. They may be feeling bad. You may say, how's your day? You know, you have a good, those, that, those, nice, those nice greetings like from when you go to uh, Chick-fil-A. You know, they greet you with a smile. Well, listen, you, you, you come there with a smile on your job and it's something about you. And uh, you, just, you may have small talk. The point is God will use you to change their thinking. Next thing you know, they'll come to your line every time. They may give you small talk. But they're drawn by you because of the anointing and through your presence. The only thing they'll know is when I get by you, I don't know. It's just like I feel peace. I feel a easiness. I don't care what your job is, whatever it is. When you walk in the anointing of God, you practice his presence. You're going to affect those who are around you. The word of God says he went about healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Why? Because God was with them. We're talking about glorifying God. You can be a school teacher. You may have students in your class that may come with a bad day. But you know what? If you know your purpose, once again, this anointed couple with the calling of God on your life, you can change their mindsets. God will give you a word or something that you can say to them that will change their way of thinking it could be something like she sneezes or a person sneezes and you say you know what god bless you it'll change their whole demeanor i'm telling you ask me how i know it will change their whole demeanor because sometimes you know what they may be acting up just to act up but they need sometimes they need to know the love of christ 
Now, you may not be able to say it in those terms, but you know what? People can tell your actions. And it will change the course of their day. There will be students, listen, that may come to you, you're a teacher that may, they just come to your class and skip the other classes. Why do they go to your class? Because it's something about you. It's something, I should say rather, the anointing of God that you're practicing. Only thing they know is through you, God will use you to help them get to where they need to go and change their thinking. Once again, he healed all who were oppressed by the devil. Once again, oppression is just a stronghold, a way of thinking that's contrary to God. You believe you're in this bondage, a wrong way of thinking. The enemy oftentimes will use fear and terror to come against you, to put you in bondage. But Jesus came to heal all who were oppressed by the devil. He wants to do the same thing through you. Whatever your occupation is, it could be, you can come home, you can be in your neighborhood, there's something different about you, the anointing. We allow God to use you in that manner. He went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Now, I'm going to give you a vivid example of this. You all remember David? If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. In the beginning of this chapter, it talks about how David is now anointed king. He is anointed to be the next king of Israel. So we see the anointing. In verse 14, it says, it starts out, it says, Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord terrified him. Now let me help you out with that. That's that's a bad translation. We know that there's no evil in God. In fact, the word of God says there's no shadow of turning with him. There's no darkness with God. He is good. He is light. What happened with Saul, if we remember Saul, Saul was in disobedience. He wanted to do things his way. He was anointed by God to be king, and the anointing was on him. But once again, if we read back in chapter 15, he disobeyed God. And so Samuel the prophet told him, he said, look, just like you kind of tore my my, uh, robe, the kingdom will be torn from you and given to another man. So think about it. He had this in his mind. I'm going to get fired. I will no longer be king of Israel. In chapter 16, verse 14, the word of God says the spirit of God left him. Can you imagine you wore the spirit of God like a cloak? Now, all of a sudden, his presence is not no longer there. That in itself is terrifying. Then you have the enemies whispering things in your ear. What happened? Oh, you're not anointed anymore. You know, he's going to take the kingdom away from you. Now you're dealing with all these thoughts. And you know what? He started dealing with something called depression. So this evil spirit was not from God, but it was the enemy attacking his mind. His spirit was no longer there. Can you imagine that's a bad place to be in? He was in terror. You don't know what move you're making, if it's the right move or the wrong move. If you study Saul's life, he even got to the point he began to, to consult witches for direction. Why? Because he was trying to find something like something he had. He was trying to find the spirit. He was trying to find comfort. But the spirit of God had left him. Now, he was still king, but the anointed king was no longer there. Now, let's get to David. So, Saul, once again, the spirit of God had left him. Well, his attendants began to see this. And his attendants said, you know what? We need to find someone who can play music, something that would kind of help him in his in his issues. He gets depressed. He gets angry, gets upset. And so they say one of the young attendants said, you know, I know this Bethlehemite, this this person, uh, one of Jesse's son. He's a man that's skilled in playing. He is a valiant warrior and he's a pretty good looking guy. And so they told Saul about it, and Saul sent for David. He sent, he sent word to Jesse and said, hey, 
Can you, can, you, can your boy come to my place? And blah, blah, blah. And this is where we pick up reading at uh, chapter 16, verse 21. It reads, David came to Saul and stood before him. And Saul loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David stay, I'm sorry, stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. In other words, he said, uh, Ask Jesse, can you allow uh, David to start working for me? Because I like him. He's a good guy. It happened that when the evil spirit from God came on Saul, David would take the lyre in his hand and play. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Once again, we see David was anointed king in the beginning of chapter 16. But because of the anointing on his life. Well, first, let me go back. Why was David anointed? Why was he an anointed musician, an anointed warrior? Well, because he spent time with the presence of God. Think about it. There's no one out there but David and his sheep. Now, look at this. It's just David and his sheep. So he had all the time in the world to spend time praising God, worshiping God, Think about all the songs that he had written. All these songs, all him glorifying God. That's what he did all day. Now, once again, remember the word of God says he inhabits the praise of his people. As he began to worship God on a daily basis, the presence of God came on him. This presence, he began to wear it like a coat. That anointing was on him. Once again, as I stated before, when you begin to wear that anointing, when you begin to practice the presence of God, you begin to see things from God's perspective. So therefore, when the lion and the bear came to attack the sheep, the word of God says the lion and the bear, they had the sheep in their mouth and David went after it. Things from God's point of view. So he's worshiping God. Not only that, the anointing to fight, the anointing to defend was on him. Now, something about God, when you practice his presence, let, let me say it a different way. Anything you do in private will eventually become public. There are no secrets. Whatever you do in private will become public. You decide what's going to become public. What do you mean? This is what I said. Anything that you do in private will become public if you don't believe me look at so many people famous or not famous the things that they did for years good or bad in private eventually it always comes out it always comes out so what's the message anything you're doing in private that's not godly stop doing it because eventually i don't care how good you think you are it will become public but it also means for those who are seeking god no one knows who you are, but if you continue the work, God will take you from private to public. David is a shepherd boy. Who's out there? How would anyone know this about this anointing on his life? God sees you where you are. You may be a housewife. You may be saying, listen, I got these three kids. No one sees me. No, you just keep practicing the presence of God. There will come a day, there will come a time where God will take you from private to public. But he's going to show you. But it comes back practicing the presence of God on a daily basis. When you do that, you begin to see things, once again, from God's perspective. You begin to get God's wisdom on how to do life. Now, remember, this is before Goliath. He's just a shepherd boy. But someone may notice, they noticed the anointing on his life. They noticed that he was a skilled musician. They noticed that he was a skilled warrior. Whatever happened, God allowed that person, one of Saul's attendants, to see this anointing, they, to see David wear this anointing and word got back to Saul so David began to do good works he became Saul's armor bearer now once again he's practicing the presence of God 
Because he's practicing the presence of God, Saul is drawn to him. The word God says he liked David. He found favor in his eyes. There was something about David. There's something about you. If you practice the presence of God, once again, people will be drawn to you. Practice his presence. Practice his presence. Remember, the anointing is just a smear. People are attracted to the anointing of God. Anything you do because you wear the anointing, people are going to take notice. You're going to be different. Your words will be seasoned with grace. There is something that's going to be about you. It's not you. It's the anointing on you. Why? Because you're practicing the presence of God. David was practicing the presence of God. So now even the king now notices him. The king notices the anointing. Now remember, David just came in just to do a job. But now all of a sudden, because he's practiced the presence of God, the king not only the king likes him. He's drawn to David. There's no such thing as a person who practices the presence of God and no one notices. If you say, brother pastor, no one noticed me, we just keep practicing the presence because someone is going to notice. Because trust me, God wants to use you more than you want to be used. So David goes in to do a job, but because the king likes him, now he tells his father, hey, let, let David work for me. The presence of God has produced a job for David now. Not only does David anointed to to play for Saul when Saul getting these depressive moods if you will now he's working in the service of the king he's his armor bearer the armor bearer is one of the most trusted people his armor bearer you begin to see parts of the king that no one else sees or knows that's your true day today honor and praise as we lift up our hands to the Lord This has been Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. We pray that you continue to gain more insight into God's Word as Dr. Meredith shares the good news of the laws that govern the kingdom and how those laws can be applied through the active faith in your life. The Living the Abundant Life Christian Center is located in Little Rock, Arkansas at 8923 Sunset Lane, directly behind the Dollar General. You are invited to join us each Sunday at 11 a.m. for Sunday School and again at 1145 where you will enjoy a powerful worship service. Remember to tune in to KJBN 1050 a.m. every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. as Dr. Meredith encourages us with Bible-based laws that will help us to prosper in every aspect of our lives. Please send all correspondence to the address on the screen And we thank you for watching Living the Abundant Life with Pastor Samuel Meredith. We magnify your name, we glorify, and we lift up our hands to the Lord.